Hey y'all. <laughs> Sorry, I look really good shit right now, but okay. Today I'm gonna be doing a video. Some will find it interesting, some will just think, oh, I'm looking for attention. No, let me take this off. Hate glasses. Um I'm not looking for empathy or pity out of this. I am looking for the people who's had a hard life alone with me so they can understand that they're not alone, that it could always be worse if it is worse, or in their case scenario, it might be worse for them, but everyone goes through different things in their life, and that's just life. Yeah, life is shitty, but if God didn't make it shitty, then it wouldn't be a test to see if you're good or bad. Life is just one big test to see where, whether you should go to heaven or whether you should go to hell. I usually don't talk about God that much, I'm not that religious, but <sighs> this has a lot of effect to do with that, so. Okay, I'll be telling you my story. Um, and I'm gonna make it short, as short as I can. Um, I won't go into detail. If you have any questions, text me in the comments, whatever. Um, okay. Let's start when things started to get really tough. Um, when I was eight years old, well, I was the only kid until I was eight years old. Um, after my little brother Andrew got born, my mom didn't act like I would, no longer existed, so she, I guess, they didn't want me around, so she sent me to a mental hospital for pushing her. It's like, okay, I guess I'm mentally insane for pushing. Okay. <laughs> but I stayed there for, like, six months. Um... I had to spend Christmas there. Um, it was really hard. I got bullied a lot there. This girl tried to kill me. Whatever. <laughs> she didn't do a very good job. But she did take away the right for me to listen to music. Just say she wrapped around the headphones around my neck and said I did it. Woke up without my music. I'm like, where'd it go? Oh, you tried to kill yourself. No. <laughs> okay. Um. And then my mom and stepdad George would always fight, pretty much my whole life. Um. Eventually they got a divorce, and they would put me and my grandma through it, and my mom called me two faced. I'm just trying to help out both situations, you know. My stepdad is basically my dad. My real dad wasn't really around that much because my mom wouldn't let him be. Um, I've always had anger issues. I've never had a friend until fifth grade. Fifth grade, I met a girl named Hannah. Uh, she doesn't do many uh, videos anymore. Uh, typical tuber. 9-11, check her out. Um, we moved a lot. I've been to eight different schools so far, and I'm going to be a sophomore this year, so most of my life I moved, um, or I got kicked out of school. Um, I was sexually abused in kindergarten by another kindergartner. That was tough. No one would believe me until I was older. Um, and then after the divorce, well not really after, in the middle of the divorce my grandma passed away. I really love her. I really miss her. When I didn't have Hannah, I had grandma. If I didn't have grandma, I had Hannah. All I had was Hannah after that. And then we moved no longer see her. We still talked, but it wasn't the same, of course. Um, so then I really didn't have anyone. We moved again. Um, 
I met this boy named Dean, after, like, right before I was about to commit suicide. He really helped me out, even though people say he was a bad influence, because he was, but he was my life source. I know that sounds stupid, but everyone has the reason to live. He was mine. He was all I had. And then one day he went to juvie for five months and I didn't see him that entire time, of course. Um, I started cutting a lot. I started doing drugs, ditching, even lit a field on fire. I think I might have killed a horse. I'm sorry. Don't be bad. Uh, but... My mom's boyfriend, after she got divorced with George, my mom's boyfriend, Marcus, God, I hate him. <laughs> he, uh, he started to abuse me with the belt. He would leave big welts all over my arms and my legs and my butt. Welts as big as, like, the ones slaves would have. You know, probably not as many, of course. I'm not saying this is similar. But, I'm just trying to give you an idea of how hard he would hit. I was scared of him. I ate a cookie once and I got beat for it. Fat ass. <laughs> um, and then, one night I came home and my mom started hitting on me. And she gave me a busted lip a bloody nose, and a black eye. I couldn't hide my busted lip or my black eye. My black eye was really swollen, swollen up. Um, that night, I had to go to my mom's, well, Marcus's mom's house. So, she saw it, and she called the police, and I had to tell what happened. I didn't want to because I knew... It resolved in me not being with my mom anymore, and I couldn't think of a life without being in Cheyenne. It's where I'm from. It's where I was born for. It's where I lived for um, 13 years. But I had to leave. Dean came back towards that part. And I was happy, even though I was getting beat. He helped me without him even knowing. But when I had to leave, my dad picked me up from Missouri. And I begged him and begged my grandpa to at least let me say goodbye to him. And we hugged for, like, the longest minute ever. We've never hugged before. That was the last time I've ever seen him. It's been two years now. I visited this summer. My mom, she's doing better. She's still alcoholic. She's still really selfish, but some people don't change. You just have to accept them for the way they are. My Ben, he's still a heroin addict. My uncle Ben. <laughs> My ben. Um, not really much has changed. Hannah's now in Texas, so I didn't get to really see her. And I couldn't see Dane because my dad wouldn't let me. But... I'm glad I visited this summer. It was kind of like a closure until the next two years. Um, now lots of people would say I'm doing much better. I don't know. It's just... Day after day, nothing ever happens anymore, but I guess that's a good thing. 
um, came out of my emo stage. You probably can't tell because I'm, I'm wearing black. Oh, bo oh no. <sighs> um, that's pretty much it for now. You know, I'm only 15. I'll be 16 this month. <sighs> so... I'll probably make more, if any more of that crap goes on, or if I'm actually doing really well. I'm just scared that someone else I really care for is going to die really soon. But I guess death is a part of life. One day we'll go through it ourselves. It's just a matter of time. No one knows. Which is why I do believe that when they say live your day like it's your very last, you should. Now that doesn't mean go crazy and have fun and spend all your money. It means make the best out of what you have. Be grateful for everything you have because the next day you could lose it all. Sometimes you don't realize how much you have until you lose it. I didn't realize I had a really good life when I had a big house. The whole basement was my own. I had a friend, a really good friend. I had my grandma alive. Even though mom and George would argue all the time, it was way better than what it is now. Now I live in like a shack, kind of. It looks like it on the outside, but I have to work my butt off like every day. Before that, I didn't even have to do chores. It was awesome. But I guess in a way, this kind of helped me grow up. So, for all you guys who are suicidal, Keep holding on. That's all I could say. That's all you really can do. Someone or something will come along soon. You just have to wait. And I know waiting is really hard when you're depressed because that's all you seem to do, but... Don't think about the future. Don't think about the past. Especially don't think about the past. Think about that day and how you're going to get through it. And then when you wake up the next morning, think about that day and how you're going to get through it. Keep going that way. So what I did. I hope this helped you. <laughs> Probably didn't, but a lot of people have their stories and you really don't know about people until you hear their stories. I think I'm way misjudged for being someone I'm not, but isn't it everyone? <laughs> well, have a nice day. I don't know. <laughs> Bye.